colder temperatures, snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and that means shopping. But there's one place you may have overlooked, the library. Monica Bayless didn't overlook it. She has two boys with voracious reading appetites. I just, you know, I never know what to get the boys, but I like giving them books. And this is one time when the library won't ask you to bring your books back. It's the Scholastic Book Fair. Librarian Melissa Cast Breedy says the book fair serves more than one purpose. This is our ninth year of the book fair. The children's collection is almost entirely funded by this book sale. The ultimate goal is we do this in support of a local charity. This year is Girls Inc. But the book fair is about more than just donation. When you give a child a book, you give them the gift of reading. And that's something that can last a lifetime. And if you don't get kids reading by the fourth grade level, that they really struggle as, as older students in school and high school and then later in college. Cass Breedy says that fun and adventurous books are a good way to get kids interested in reading. And the book fair is never short on those. They love these books because it's action and it's mystery, but they're also written at a very approachable level. The book fair may not be the top Black Friday destination, but it has its niche. Just make sure those books are long enough to last. And what's your return policy? <laughs> For the Omaha News, I'm John Schreiner. My name is Brian Edgar, and I just have a serious passion with a low budget to go fast. He's always had a passion for drag racing. I should have done it, oh, 25 years ago, but had kids instead and had to wait, raise those. And he does everything himself in his single car garage. Started off with a pickup, now we got a, a car. This is his 1972 Chevrolet Nova, and it's anything but stock. After a friend of mine had taken his Corvette out there and he wanted to challenge me to a race or whatever and embarrassed him pretty good getting beat by a pickup and beat a Corvette, so. That's when the racing bug caught hold of Brian. Started spending more money on the motor, updating things. Narrowed the rear end ourselves, cut the axles ourselves. The speed and the, and the quickness is definitely, definitely pleasurable. He says that while he is a speed seeker, the build is part of the fun. You, you learn what you did on the first one. Knowing that the cars are so much easier to work on, I should, probably should have started there first. The budget of an amateur makes it a struggle. It pays $15,000 to win the points championship. And, but if we can go out there and at least qualify, three or four times in a year, maybe it'll pay for some. It's not just about racing. He has an ultimate goal. I always wanted to hit 200 miles an hour and do it in 1,320 feet. This one here should run somewhere probably about 140 miles an hour. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say 190 would be fine, but that would probably be close enough. For the Omaha News, I'm John Schreiner. Polls for the 2010 elections opened at 8 a.m. today. At the Peace Presbyterian Church near 204th and Pacific, voters were filtering in by 8.30. Polling sites weren't busy early, consistent with the prediction by the Douglas County Commissioner's Office of just a 39% turnout. The prediction, if true, would be only slightly lower than previous midterm elections. And by mid-morning, parking lots like this one at St. Stephen the Martyr Church near 156th and Q Streets were starting to slowly fill up, a trend that's expected to continue throughout the afternoon. Peak voting hours were expected to be around noon and again around 6 p.m. as people made the evening commute. Election Commissioner Dave Phipps says interest is at the core of voter turnout. The no Senate race, barely a gubernatorial race, um, you know, there just isn't that much uh, competitiveness uh, throughout the county. And so I just don't feel like a lot of people are interested in this election. One of the busier sites was the Election Commission office where voters could drop off early voting ballots. Early voting begins 35 days prior to the election and runs until poll closing. Early voting numbers are often used as a projection tool in guessing voter turnout. Exact numbers won't be available until later this evening after polls close at 8 p.m. You know, really the only way we can tell, uh, you know, we, we don't you know, have any electronic voting or monitoring or anything like that. So, you know, once we start running the pieces of paper through and at the end of the day, we know that, you know, this many people voted and that's how many voted for a percentage. For the Omaha News, I'm John Schreiner.